Welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast, featuring inspiring interviews with Etsy shop owners, hosted by Hijama Elazu. Hi, and welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Ijama, and I thank you for joining me for another episode. This week, my guest is Charlotte, and we're kind of crossing the pond, but also not really co- crossing the pond, and, and you'll find out why. Charlotte runs the Etsy shop Crooked Crow Masks, and she's been running it. Ooh, Charlotte. In fact, I'm not going to tell your story. Charlotte, thank you for being my guest and welcome to the podcast. Hi. Hi, Jama. It's <laughs> nice to talk with you. Yeah, same here. So before we dive into it, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself first? Yeah, I'm um, a mask maker. I make masks for TV and movies and for special occasions like Halloween. And I... Um, Let's see, I'm in my mid-50s, and I have an Etsy store. I'm really happy with my successor, and I also make masks and sell them on Amazon, eBay, and through my website. Nice. So where where did you first start selling your masks? Um, I first started selling my masks on Etsy. I opened my store in, um, I think it was November. It was right after Halloween. So it was November of 2018. And I just had an immediate success and I was like, Oh, (laughs) well, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And why masks? Did you have some, was it just a hobby initially or what's the story behind you? even becoming a mask maker? Yeah, so I, um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm an artist in that way. Yeah. I have a, a vision um, of what I would like to express. And I find that the best way for me to do that is with masks. And uh, I liked to take the photos. I like to have photos. I have a partner who's a photographer, but I, I like to get photos of the masks and people wearing the masks. And I like to see them in, in movies. And so I think for me at first, I, at first I was with this business, I started making the masks to be masks, but now I really feel like I'm, I'm making the masks for the other art that gets created with them. So I get to sell to musicians and filmmakers and theaters and operas and even to like, you know, little, little Bobby's birthday party. Right. But Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm finding that it's, we're, I'm making the masks for the photos more than taking the photos for the masks, if that makes sense. So it's, it's been a really interesting process to kind of come home with it. And also I, um, I'm, you know, I'm um, Native American, and um, my my people have a really long and beautiful tradition of mask making. Yes. Most of the world cultures do. Most of, you know, if you get into history, you can find that people all over the world have used masks. But I, I really feel it's really something, like, I, it's, I just have to do it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now I'm curious. Did you initially market to the audience that you now have as your primary um buyers so like you know you mentioned musicians and opera and movies and tv or were you found by them yeah that's been that's been really interesting so i use a bunch of different tools to um to find my market and i i feel like if you yeah am i am i a crafter or am i a business person right <laughs> right yeah mm-hmm. but in order to if you want to make a living at what you do and it, that wasn't how i started but if if you do i think you have to take it seriously and mm-hmm. you should find the best ways you can to market your product and so yeah i began marketing my product and then they found me but it it wouldn't have found me except that I put myself out there, you know? Mm-hmm. Did that answer your question? It, it did. It did. Now, by putting yourself out there, do you mean selling on a platform like Etsy or being involved in social media or going to events where you were able to show what you what you can do? 
Yeah. So um, back in, um, oh my goodness. Yeah, it was back in the in the 90s, in the 1990s, I had a soap business. I made and sold handmade soap and I sold it online. Mm -hmm. And that was my first internet business. And at the time, well, it was, it wasn't like the internet really looked a lot different than that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. And I, I got it. Um, part of the problem there was, yeah, you have to market everything yourself. You have to create all the buzz. You have to do everything yourself and a credit card processing. And that was a big deal. And I actually ended up in part of a class action lawsuit, uh, with a company, um, the, because credit card processing, it was a, it was difficult, you know. Did and, you have to uh, use authorize.net or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yes, and that's I remember was, that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really why I went to Etsy this time is yes. because they do so much for you. Mm -hmm. If you get on Etsy, they take care of the marketing, advertising, the credit card processing. Like uh, they even prompt you like how to write your descriptions. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel like um, having done it myself in the beginning a long time ago compared with now, it's really easy. Just, just, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. And and that makes a lot of sense. And even though now running your own website is a lot easier than I imagine it was back then, and even running an e-commerce website, because technology has made it so much easier for individuals to be able to do that without, like you said, going through a third party and, you know, all, all that. Um, yeah. It still yeah. is. It still does take a lot more effort to yeah. to be an independent seller on your own website not to say that anyone shouldn't because i do believe you know you should have your own your own space on the internet but um selling on etsy is a good complement to that or at least for you has been is is what yeah. i'm hearing yeah i i really i feel that a lot and i i feel like um like the business of selling what you make is probably for me, I spend 90% of my time that I work selling what I make and about 10% making it. Mm. And at this point, I even have helpers who do a lot of the, um, what do you call it? Repetitive tasks for me that yeah. I just, I don't need to do. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. And, and so it's, um, <sighs> When you have your own website, when you have your own business, you're going to need to take a look at where are you spending your time. And mm -hmm. if you spend too much time running all of the aspects of your business, the administration, the marketing, the advertising, all of that stuff, you're going to spend less time making your art, your your products or whatever it is that you love to do. The reason you are a crafter in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I feel like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll stay with Etsy and these guys. It, it saves me a lot of time in the end. Yeah. Now, now you mentioned that you, you have helpers to do the things, like the more rote tasks that you don't need to necessarily be a part of. And I, I assume that has helped you scale to be able to continue to grow your business what did the process of expanding and scaling look like for you as far as finding who good people were to bring onto your team and deciding what tasks required you, Charlotte, and what tasks you were able to hand off to others? Yeah, I've been I've been really lucky that the community where I live in Alaska has been really supportive of me and I've been so blessed and so lucky uh, to have really good people uh, come on board with me, uh, like, you know, from the beginning, people that um, were willing to learn and were really interested in mask making and the whole the whole process. So for me, it was it was um, it, it was really good to train them like, look, uh, these these specific tasks, I I could do, but I'm, I would rather, it's better if, if I do the design work, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll teach you how to do that. And so I was, I have been able, I've been so lucky to train a, a whole bunch of different people in my community on how to do masks, how to make paper mache masks and mm -hmm. how to make 
processes and all of this stuff. And it's great because I, I kind of feel like when, when I'm gone, I will have left something so beautiful. Mm, yeah. To train these young people, you know, it's it's been great. So I've, yeah. I've been really happy with that. Now, and, and uh, okay, I'll just ask this question. Do you ever fear that you're training your future potential com- competitors or competition? Yeah. No, not at all. Never. Um I have an artistic vision. Mm. I know what it is I want to see. I know where I want to go. I, I, I'm going to follow my own dark muse. Like I know she's out there. I can see her and I'm following her. And I know there's nobody there. There's nobody in the world that can do what I do. Mm. The vision that I have is mine. And no, so I never do. I'm happy to train people and to teach people and to, to, engage I really like to engage the community and it's always so great when I can bring other people in and say hey look look at this cool thing I'm going to show you how to do this and you can go home and do it you know and yeah it's great I like that that actually makes me happy to think um that and I like the way you said it because I, I hope that brings hope to somebody who is a bit fearful about growing their team for fear that somebody's going to just go off and and replicate what you're doing because what you said was you have your own vision and you see that and and each of us will have a different vision now the how to is is re- replicable is that a word yeah, yeah, I can train people. yeah, it's, yeah <laughs> it's a skill that anyone can learn whether you teach them or not but the vision is what's different and the vision is where our distinctions come in. And so, you know, yeah. if, if, you know, somebody else wants to make masks as well, you know, their, their muse and their vision is not going to be like yours. And so there's yeah. my, you know, might appeal to an audience that yours might not and vice versa. And so it's, it's good. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing. Yeah, I, I really feel that. I I love to train people and I love to teach people. And I, I think that it, that can only make the world more fun and more interesting and more beautiful and more quirky. The more people there are out there doing arts and crafts, I think that's better for all of us. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not worried about anybody copying me. I, <laughs> yes. I, I, <laughs> now, I also want to mention, because earlier on I said... I was, you know, I was crossing the pond and then you just mentioned about being in Alaska and lest anyone think I don't know my U.S. geography, (laughs) I know Alaska is part of the U.S., but we're actually talking and you're in Europe right now. I am, yeah. (laughs) Yes. So, (laughs) yes. And you're actually in Portugal. Yeah. And go on, please. No, no, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I was going to say, um, can you explain what the situation is? Yeah, I, um, like I, I work really hard. I I work I work probably eighteen hours a day mm-hmm. most days, and I take a holiday once a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just go usually to Portugal. It's the place I love the most in the world, besides Alaska. Um, for a couple of weeks every year, usually I try to get over here and just relax. I I hang out with friends. Usually it's really nice, but this year. Um, while I was here, the coronavirus hit. And uh, at first, um, it just seemed like, oh, yeah, it's kind of a far away problem. It's not really going to affect me. And then every day, it started to get closer and closer. And then one day, they were just like, you know what? Nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> we, we closed the borders. Um, you're not going to Spain. My ticket uh, back home, um, I was supposed to fly uh, through Amsterdam um, back to the United States. And my port of entry in the United States is not one of the official cities that allows uh, travelers from Europe to enter. And so my tickets were canceled and I'm mm-hmm. here. <laughs> I'm still here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm really fortunate because the people here are so, so lovely and so beautiful. And they've been so kind to me. And um, I'm in a friend's house. I'm safe. We're doing okay. Yeah. I'll go home and I can get there. <laughs> if we're not, maybe I'll be able to stay. Yes. Know. Now, now this episode is going live in in June. And yeah. as we speak now, we don't know what the situation will be at that at that time. How are you able to, if at all, 
continue running your business given the situation that you're in? Yeah, that's a good question, um, Ajama. Thank you for asking me that. So I, as usual, I prepared for my holiday by creating a lot of extra masks. So I made an inventory of the masks that are built on templates. Most of my um, most popular masks, they're they're not identical because they're handmade, but they're nearly identical. They're as identical as I can make them. Yeah. And I make those on templates. And so before I left, I made a big pile of masks and I put them in storage. Mm-hmm. And my partner, uh, my life partner is there in Alaska. And <laughs> so how do I keep going? Yeah. Um, well, right now, um, I still have inventory. And so when I get an order, I'm still taking orders. I'm still <laughs> I, fortunately, I've been lucky. My business is still operating. Yeah. <laughs> and I I, um, I sent him a, a piece of paper with all the information. I need this many masks sent to this location, mm. the masks that need to go out. And he takes them out of the inventory and um, he uses gloves. All the masks were made before the virus hit, okay. which is great. So everything there is safe and they're all in airtight totes. So mm-hmm. there's just no chance. And he's been already quarantined two weeks. He's on yes. his third week too. So yeah, so it's great. So he just takes the mask out of the container, puts it in a box and goes to the post office. And the post office there is a really small post office. They only allow one person in the store at a time. Oh. <laughs> it's great. So we're getting them out and they're really like, you can be pretty sure that, it's about probably the best possible <laughs> clean. Wow. Thing. Now, you you had planned to be gone for a certain period of time. Did yeah. you make more masks than you would need for the time you were gone? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's a good question. So the sales are a little bit slower, which is understandable, but mm. they haven't. So my inventory is going to last me a little bit longer than I intended. Okay. But we were you were talking earlier about helpers. I have a really good helper, um, and I've trained her to make the bases, which is like the, um, yeah, she uses a template and then does the paper mache. She also uh, puts the liner on and does the straps. It's because you got to hold it on somehow. Mm-hmm. And she, she makes those and, um, I pay her to make those. And then normally what she does is she brings, we, we do a trade off, which, right. Like <laughs> with the quarantine, it's going to be really interesting. Mm-hmm. That'll happen. And then, um, normally what would happen is I would finish the mask. So okay. I would be the one who does the artistic painting oh, and the, right. stuff. but I'm not there. And I, um, I can't do that, but it's, it's fortunate that my partner is also really artistically inclined. And last night, or was it yesterday? I think. Oh, you know how time is in this quarantine. Yes. <laughs> Every day is running into the next. <laughs> yeah, we just went over it, and I was like, "Look, I, I, I know you can do these parts, right?" Mm-hmm. And so now that's what's going to happen is he's going to be doing the part that I would normally do, okay. and like we'll just hope, we'll just hope for the best, right? Um, yeah. I'm going to start my studio here. So I bought a, look, I can't, I can't even go to the store. I can't even buy like paint and stuff here. So I bought as many materials as I can. And I've asked him to send me stuff. So oh, I'm starting yes. my studio here and I do sell quite a bit of masks to movies here. Like I'm working on some masks for a big movie right now in uh, French and um, hopefully I'll get them done before filming starts. And so, yeah, I'm just restarting my studio. Um, the show must go on. Right? The show must go on. Yes. Wow. I, I'm impressed with how you've innovated and and just what's the word? You know, just gone with the flow, moved with, you know, what's happening. Well, first of all, you had the foresight to prepare for to over prepare for your, you know, for your vacation. And that's paying off because I I can imagine that with the slowed sales, your inventory will last even longer. And then give you time to, you know, set yourself back up again where yeah. you are. And yeah. and like you said, um, <clears throat> again, the vision is with you. So, you yeah. know, you can take that wherever you go as long as you have your supplies to, That's right. to follow yeah. through. 
Yes. I've applied for a tax number, so hopefully I'll be able to continue to work here. And I really believe that my masks are unique. My vision is unique. And I'm not I'm not worried. I think that I will just sell more to Europe than I usually do. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> figure mm -hmm. it out. Yes. I will probably, if the situation stays like this, if this goes on longer than anybody anticipated, mm -hmm. I will look for a fulfillment company in the United States and I will build the mask here and I will get new helpers here and I will ship big boxes of masks to the United States to a fulfillment company and they'll send them out. Oh, just right, yeah. One does, right? Yes, I've, I've yeah, heard about can, those. Yeah, they can do that. They can have inventory. So I just have to... I may have to do something with taxes and tariffs and VAT. I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll be making the masks here and I'll hire art students here instead of in Alaska. And yeah. I'll, I'm going to carry on. I'm not giving up. Yeah. I like that. Now, when you originally opened your shop, um, you weren't new to the whole e-commerce game because you had the soap business before when you opened your store, what was the original intention that you had behind running the shop? Having already run an e-commerce business before, had, yeah. did your goals and your focus change when you yeah. decided to open this mask shop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I had been making masks for years and mostly for my own art, just for photos and you know, little plays and cosplays and theater productions and things. And I started making them for friends and we were winning all of the costume contest. And I was like, you know, I could probably sell these online. Let me just try it. And I made a few masks. I listed, I sold them, I put them on Etsy and wow, they started to sell right away and mm. not like, um, just nowhere, nowhere, whatever, like my first sales, my first sales were to like Hollywood, to, to Studio City, Los Angeles, to New York. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. I see what's happening here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to do this. Okay, great. So I just kept making masks and listing them. And it really, I thought it was just going to be for fun. I was like, oh, let's just see what happens. But I had a really good, beautiful response from the public when I started putting them online. I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. Well, let's just do that. And then it really took off. So that was not, not what I expected. And if mm -hmm. I have any advice for anybody, I would say be prepared for success because that was the last thing I ever thought would happen. I never thought, Oh, I'll make a living as an artist. That yeah. doesn't happen. <laughs> One in a million people that consider themselves artists to make a living. I mean, it just doesn't happen. And it started to happen. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, so it, it's just been like, I would say go for it. If you're an artist and you have a vision and you think that there's a chance that people might like what you do, mm -hmm. go for it. What, what I mean, you don't have anything to lose. I just list them, see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that you said to prepare yourself for success because um, I think a lot of times we go in uh, or, or new sellers will, will approach it with a well, what if type of mentality or not? Uh, no, what if is not the right meant is not the right phrase I'm looking for, but not not approach it expecting to be hugely successful. Approach it maybe expecting to be marginally successful, or yeah. you know have you know a sale here and there as opposed to okay, I'm starting this thing. And I expect it to be a hit in the marketplace. I don't think many people approach what they're doing that way. Yeah, that, well, that's what happened to me. And I really did not expect it. Yeah. I, I That was like the last thing that I, I never thought that would happen. So I think it would be a, a really good idea if, um, if people did, you know, prepare for success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, with your products, how do you determine how to price them? And do you think that's going to change if given the current situation you're in, um, if your pricing, pricing um, model will change because you, you will start to set, make and sell from Europe before you get to go back to Alaska? Yeah, I think that's a... 
You know, I think that question fits in really good with the last question that you asked. Um, because like I was saying like artists, like the, the chance of that happening is, is it's really, you, you're really lucky, right? You, it's so many different things have to come together for that to work. And I, I do feel like, um, when, when people, it's kind of a black hole for your ego, right? To say, oh yeah, I'm a great artist and I'm going to charge like $5 billion a piece for my <laughs> items because I'm one of a kind and I'm just so great. I don't think that's a really good approach. I think that market-based pricing is a lot saner and will help to keep the ego in check because, you know, if you do get successful, you, you're going to have to deal with that too, right? <laughs> so yes. Like, that you're like the, the queen of the world or whatever. And so yeah. like, yeah, I, I feel like um, I'm a crafts person and I need to keep that in mind. And so what I do is I try to focus on the pro product. I try to focus on the mask mm. and make the best, most beautiful mask that I can make that will be exactly the mask that my customer wants and, and will do what it's designed for and it will stand up to the abuse that it's going to receive and that it can be competitively priced. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I look at where are other masks priced in the marketplace. So it's called market-based pricing. So if, if most of the masks run somewhere, say between like, I don't know, 15 and a hundred dollars, I would say you should put your mask like a little bit, a little bit higher than the middle. Um, and, that's where masks sell, right? That's mm. that's the place that the market has determined that masks will do well. But that's that's not to say that your product isn't, you know, one of a kind and unique, but I really do think you should know who you're selling to mm. and wanna pay for it. Because if you want to sell your masks or whatever it is that you make, if you want to sell for like five thousand dollars each, you need a really special market for that. Like Yeah. Right? Yes. So, so for me, like I, I have a pretty good idea. I'm going to spend like about $5 to ship it. If it's a standard size mask, if it's big and it's going to like North Carolina, yeah, it's going to cost $50 and that's going to suck. And that's happened to me more often than I, I like to admit because you know, I'm from, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm going to spend roughly $5 on shipping. I offer free shipping. I think it's a good idea. Your customer doesn't want to mess around with that. They they just want what it is they want. You're solving a problem for them. Mm. You're solving a problem for the customer. And part of the problem that you're solving is, I need a mask. Well, yeah. you've got to give it to them. So give them free shipping. Go ahead and do it. I, I'm in Alaska. I pay a lot for shipping. Half of my business expenses are shipping. Okay? Huh. <laughs> yeah. So, but you think about it. I'm paying $5 for shipping. I'm paying about five in materials. I'm paying about five for like all the other stuff I use, like E-Rank and um, Tailwind and some of the other services that I use to help me with my social media for yeah. advertising. And then I'm going to pay a little bit for a helper. And uh, at the end of that, there's about about half of the money that remains is is actually mine for the work that I do. And so if I do my work in a way that is really efficient, then I can actually make enough to make a living doing this. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It does make sense. <laughs> and so um, my next question is, do you go in, well, at this point, you know already, but when you, before you knew, how did you know how much you needed to make a living? And so work your way backwards. So yeah. I guess I'm asking for somebody who's starting out and wants to know, okay, do I first determine what my cost of living is and then work my way backwards to a price? And yeah. and if you do it that way, can you still use the market-based pricing model? Oof. Does that make sense what I'm asking? Yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, I think first, yeah, first off, you have to make sure that the thing that you're selling is something that people want. Yes. Um, I, you find your market and you find ways to engage and interact with your market and you find ways to touch them so that they want what you're selling. You know, you, 
you build a relationship with your customers, with your clients. And yeah, so market-based pricing, absolutely. You're not, they're not even going to find you in the first place if you're priced too low or too high, Mm -hmm. you know, they look at your product and you're selling it for just too low. They're just going to think, oh, that's not worth it. It's pretty bad. It's probably going to break. It's probably not well made. How can they do it for so cheap? And in the same thing, but it's like I said earlier, you know, just don't, don't, don't charge too much. Mm-hmm. And so get your product in this sweet spot and you, you will find it. Then, then you can kind of work from there. And I do raise my prices. I raise my prices every year. I read somewhere I said, nobody ever regrets raising their prices. And I thought, well, I don't want to break my business. <laughs> <laughs> it's working like I don't want to mess it up but yeah I think um I I believe that anybody that's starting out in the very beginning they should try to sell their product as cheap as they can manage until they get the reviews because once you have the reviews once you have like a hundred people saying oh yeah this is so amazing I'm so glad I bought this this person really solved the problem for me then you can start to raise your price. Then you have that reliability. People look at your shop and they say, oh, look at that. She's got a hundred and something five-star reviews. Mm-hmm. Well, this must be okay. Mm-hmm. Then you can raise your price and you can raise your price and you can raise it again and you can keep <laughs> raising your price at that point. But I, I think until you get there, until you get those reviews, yeah. you should try to sell as cheaply as you can manage it. Okay. And But just until you get the reviews, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes, makes that makes perfect. I was just about to say that, that makes perfect sense. Yes. Okay. Now, speaking of raising prices, you know, there's of course the the plus side to that. What what's your philosophy on running sales? Do you also believe in lowering your price, you know, for any reason? Yeah. So, I hear that where people say no, I never do, but mm-hmm. I do offer sales. I one of the things I think that's helped me a lot with Etsy and I can't do this on my Amazon or my eBay stores or if I can I'm just I'm just too busy to figure out <laughs> I just can't figure it out but I I with my um shipping label when I send a shipping label to the customer you know you get to include that little piece of paper that goes in the box yes. I offer them a 10% discount mm. they use and I get a lot of repeat customers and I really believe that made the difference. And given in my head, the fact that I'm, I've calculated in enough profit that I can afford to offer that 10% discount. Sometimes Mm -hmm. I do run sales. I currently have an Easter sale on. So if you order an Easter mask, which, you know, this is going to go out in June, but you know, still you'll get any, any rabbit, right? Any rabbit or bunny Mm -hmm. because you your money, right? Um, I'll give you 10% off on that. And that's just running at that time. But I built in that, like I've decided that 10%, yeah, I can do that now and then. And and I do, I offer it for repeat customers. Yeah. And I offer it just certain, certain times, certain holidays. It's okay. I think it works. Okay. Yes. And I've heard that so much. And, and I'm going to ask you a very practical question now. What are the steps to giving your customers that discount? I mean, so you create the coupon and then how do you how do you communicate that code to them so they can come back and buy? Yeah, so when you um set up your on on your Etsy um you, you get to set up your shipping label that mm-hmm. you know that that you include in any package that you send out yeah. and there's place on there to put on like a special message or something and I do I offer um, you know if you would like to come back to my store um, use this code and and they just I just put it in the box with the um, with the mask and so it prints on the packing slip yeah oh good to know yeah, and I, I do believe that's one of the things that really start helping my customers come back. Like, oh, I, I, oh, yeah, of course, I like to believe I make a great product. I think I do. <laughs> yeah, but I think when you when you say, look, if you're if you're a friend of my shop, if you, you know, we build a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. If you ask for more masks for your project, you're working in theater or you're making a movie, you're a musician and you need you know, a bunch of masks for different shows and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I I want to encourage you to come back. I want to reward you. Like, because you mean so much to me. Like, 
I'm touching you and you're touching me. We're helping each other. And I really do want to support that. So yes, yes. Yeah, I like that. And I think that would work for any anybody who sells any product that does lend itself to re- repeat customers and, you know, uh, repeat buyers. And right away in my head, uh, it just something just popped into mind that there might be some people for whom that might not be um, feasible. Like, say, if you're in the wedding industry, um, yeah. You hope that your customers are only getting married once. I mean, they hope. <laughs> <laughs> they hope. And, and you know, that's the, the positive thing, you know. Yeah. But, yes, if they do come back to you for something else, that would be nice. But, I mean, in that particular um, market, most of those are one and done. However, I guess they could share the coupons with friends who are getting married and say, hey, look, I bought from this person. It was a really good experience, good product. Use this coupon code. You can even get a discount. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a referral. And I I believe that like personal referrals like that, like if if you make a beautiful wedding dress for someone or whatever it is, like a veil or Mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. hair or something, and your customer loves that and they love it enough to go to their friend and say, hey, look, this thing was so amazing. Look at this beautiful thing yes. I got. I got it on Etsy. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. And yeah. here, look, I've even got a coupon code for you. Yes. And they give it to their friend. There's no better, really. Is there a better way to get a referral than from a friend that just says, you know. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's also why it's important. And I don't know why anyone wouldn't do this, but to include, well, first of all, when you're setting up your Etsy shop to brand it for your store. And when you do that, your when you create your packing slips, you're able to customize them. So you can put your own branding because you don't just want your referrals to say, oh, I got it on Etsy because they're going to get on Etsy and see thousands of other sellers. You want them to say, oh, Crooked Crow Masks is a, is a shop on Etsy. That's where I bought it from. So that when they do go to the platform, they know yeah. where they're going. They're not just going to search the entire platform. And so that's why branding is so important. And and yeah. you get to do that with your packing slip. And I think that's pretty much one of the few ways Etsy, you, you can do that on Etsy. I mean, you can, of course, make small cards and, you know, to to put in as inserts with your packaging. Yeah. Um, but you want to make sure that people aren't just saying, I got it on Etsy. Et- Etsy wants them to say that, but you want them to say, oh, I got it at Crooked Crow Masks. Th- that's, yeah. you know, and, and the shop is on Etsy. You know, I have I have more to say about that. <laughs> Please go. <laughs> yeah. So so like I, I make masks and I also I'm I'm also an artist and I, I do kind of consider those separate things. Not entirely, but um. And part of the art that I do is with my partner, we take photos of the masks. And so we do these really beautiful photo shoots. Like I love the photos that he takes so much. I've seen on your, in your shop. Yes. But Thank go you. on. Yes. 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 And I include a postcard, uh, yes. of our work, um, in every single order and, Um, it just, I write a handwritten note and it just says, Hey, thank you so much, um, for your order. I hope you love your mask. Mm -hmm. I hope that this mask is just everything that you wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you do like it, would you please uh, give my shop a review? And, um, the postcards are intended to be so beautiful, uh, so that the customer will put them on the refrigerator. Or they'll put them like mm. on the corner of, of their mirror or some other little place around the house, right? Yeah, like, yes. And um, they every time they see that card, they're going to feel, um, oh, yeah, I've got that mask. I could do this art project. They're going to be yeah. reminded of me. And I try to make it so beautiful that they don't want to throw it away. Because I think that happens a lot with people's business cards. Like you, yeah, you put the stuff in the box, you know, you put in a business card and maybe a little piece of candy or something, and there's a chance they're going to throw it away. But try to make it really beautiful and handwritten and, and say something that you really feel about that customer to them and really let them know that you really do care. I think they're going to keep that. If they keep it, oh man, they'll see you. They'll see you every day. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Yes. I like that idea because you're right. There are some things 
I go there. There are some things that I I hesitate to throw away. Yeah. And I'll I'll keep like you said I'll keep to look at you know for yeah. you, you know at least for a few days before I throw it away just because yeah. I like it for whatever reason it's it's not it's not directly serving me any purpose you know, yeah. right there and then, but it's just something I like that I got in the mail. And so I'll just keep it out just to look at it. And, you know, before I, you know, get, well, I shouldn't I say that, that to you, but before. I mean, I hope that, I hope that's what happens. Yeah. Like, I hope that, that they're not throwing the card away. I hope that yes. they're saying, oh, look at those beautiful, beautiful piece of yeah. art. Let me just put and this here for next time. Yeah. I, I hope that's what happens. And in, in my mind, in my imagination of what's going on with my customer. I spend a lot of time imagining what's going on with my customers. I think it's really important. And and I, I like I really do care like what what are they doing? Like what is your project? Are you doing theater? Are you doing a movie? What are you doing? And like I love to imagine them going through their day and then while they're going through their day, they see that mask that they bought is hanging on the wall or the postcard that I sent or something else. And mm -hmm. that my, my work can be part of their life and that it can be more fun and more creative and more weird and more beautiful. And that, that I think is really important. Do you ever solicit pictures from your customers? To... I do. Oh, good. And what do you do with them? Do you put them on your social media, on your website? Yeah. I do. I love them. I really, I encourage everybody. If you got a mask for me, hello out there, people. Hashtag <laughs> crow masks. I would love to see your photos. I love customer photos so much. <laughs> I love it when they make movies and then they send me a link to their movie. And my <gasps> in the movie. I love that. I love seeing my work on the big screen. I do. I love seeing it on Instagram. Nice. I love what my customers do. They are so fun and creative people. Are there any movies that we can look for yeah. that have that have your masks in them? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, last year, I think it was last year, right around, was it a year ago or two? Anyway, right around Halloween, I made a bunch of masks for uh, one of those clown slasher horror films. <laughs> like, oh, people okay. Yeah. And it's called, um, if they finally released it, it just came out on Lionsgate in February. That one's called Clown Fear. And I'll mm -hmm. send you a link for that. And then um, one of the ones I really like, um, it just came out a couple of months ago. I didn't even know they were making a movie. I just sent them the mask. And then I they sent me a link to the movie. I was like, wow, you guys made a film? Wow. And it's called C, S-E-E, like, you know, uh -huh. to see. Uh -huh. And it's by Sean Hagwell, and he's in ten he's a filmmaker in Tennessee, and I really like that one. And then there's some other ones too that I I send you a link if you want some. Okay. Those are a couple of my favorites. I'll be honest with you, I don't do horror very well, and so yeah. scary movies are not my thing. But I will try. <laughs> well, I don't. That's a funny thing, Ijama, that. I'm going to admit something to you. I have seen very few horror movies, okay. like really like about maybe like five. I'll tell you the clown fair one. It's mostly funny. It's oh, kind okay. of, it's like one of those like cult classics or whatever. It's like kind okay. of ridiculous. Yeah. It'll be okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'm like, Oh, I really want to see it, but I kind of don't want to watch a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So we've kind of talked about some tactics that you use to promote your shop. Uh, what basically what we've just been talking about now. Um, what else do you do? Do you have you? I know you mentioned earlier Tailwind. So I assume you have some type of social media strategy. I do. Yeah. I'm I'm not like so like really into the marketing thing where I understand what a sales funnel is and all mm -hmm, that stuff. Mm -hmm. I really do pay attention to marketing. I think it's important because you can be the most amazing artist in the world. You're painting. You could be as good as Rembrandt or Van Gogh or Renoir or whoever you like. If they don't know that you are painting, you're not going to sell them. And if you want to sell your work, if you want to make a living as an artist or a craftsperson, you want to sell your work, you need to get it out there. Everybody says, oh, I don't like it. I'm shy. Well, then you're not going to sell your stuff. That's That's the end of it. Mm -hmm. you have to do it mm -hmm. and even if you don't want to even if you don't like to mm -hmm. and so yeah I, I do I have a 
I have a social media strategy. I started with Pinterest a couple years ago. And last October, I had 6.6 million monthly views on wow. Pinterest. I really, really took Pinterest on board. And I think somewhere between 40 and 60% of my traffic now comes from Pinterest. I hated the idea of Instagram. I was just, uh, and I'm a little bit older. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I'm not a spring chicken. And um, I really, I was like, I'm not going to do Instagram. Okay. <laughs> I'm just not. And I took it on board and I love Instagram. Oh my goodness. I love <laughs> I, th oh, I thought it was going to be the worst. Sounds like and you shocked yourself with how much you enjoy it. <laughs> oh, I love it. And the thing that I really love about Instagram is that people are interacting with my masks. So mm -hmm. first I was just putting pictures of the masks and I was like, well, that's all you do on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, these people actually like what I'm doing. They like my work. Um, I'm going to try to engage with them. I'm just going to take a chance and see if they won't hurt me. And in yeah. fact, didn't they really were supportive and generous with their like just the love that I got there was so amazing mm -hmm. so I and New Year's this year I started writing stories for the masks so now I've really like really gone full on Instagram and now I write a story for every mask and I try to put something out different every day yeah the engagement that I'm getting with these people the, I remember the day, the first day that somebody wrote a letter back to one of my characters. So what I do is I, oh. I have the, the mask and then I write a little story like they're a character, like they're another person. Uh -huh. I just say a little, something simple like, um, you know, Edgar really likes to mow the lawn. He just loves the smell of fr fresh cut grass, right? Just something like that in a mm -hmm. picture of a mask. And there's this is Edgar. He likes to mow the lawn. <laughs> And the first time I got a letter from one of my cust well, I'm not even a customer, just an Instagram follower, to one of my characters telling my character to hang in there. It was going to be okay. Because I had a little bit. Of I, I, I just cried because I was like, I have these people, I'm touching them. I'm, I'm reaching them and they're responding and I'm creating relationships with these, mm. with out there that I can't see and the way that they respond to the masks and to the stories and the support that I've got I just I can't even it has been the most amazing surprise of yeah. the whole thing. really also yeah I also I use Tailwind which is a tool that lets me schedule my post in advance so I mentioned Pinterest I mentioned Instagram and I also post to Facebook but with with Tailwind what I do it's like, I just, I put the picture in there. Yeah, I've got to get the picture. You'll have to do that. But just, mm -hmm. you know, do the photography, get the picture. I drop it into Tailwind. And I tell Tailwind, I want this post to go out, say it's going to go out on like April 6th at 7 p.m. Tailwind figures out the best time for the most engagement mm -hmm. for work when I get the most like likes and comments. And, the, and they'll say, you should post it on this day at this time. Okay, great. So I drop it in there and it automatically goes out on Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. I think it will do Twitter too. I'm not sure, but I don't have Twitter. I'm not going there. <laughs> it's so amazing. And it's it really makes it easy. So then all you have to do is just write the caption and and there it goes. And then the other tool that I use is E-Rank and it used to be called Etsy Rank. Yeah. Yeah, I love those guys. So they, in the beginning, they really helped me figure out how to do hashtags and not not just hashtags, but what do you call that? Search terms, like your SEO, because yes. like I said, they won't find you unless you're out there. Yeah. But you think like your customer. So what does your customer want? What are they looking for? In my case, they're looking not just for a mask, maybe looking for props or something. Mm. And so I use E-Rank and it helps me to find the words that my customers are going to be looking for and help me evaluate which ones are um, like not overused, but mm -hmm. also popular mm -hmm. so that I don't just waste my time just kind of striking out blindly yeah. and, just, well, maybe they're looking for this. I don't know, but I can yes. really get in there and find out what they want. Yeah. So do you do that? each time you create a new listing or do you sit down and brainstorm and get a list and then as you're creating the listings use the keywords that you found in your tags yeah yeah <laughs> i kind of wish that i i just had more time and i was a little more organized. i never have enough time what i would like to do is 
to spend like, I don't know, maybe a couple hours a week using E-Rank and search all the different products that I make mm-hmm. and really figure out what the best keywords are. But in fact, that's not what happens at all. Um, usually sometime in November after Halloween, I have a little bit of time. <laughs> I, 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 I like to do some work and I try to get ahead of for Mardi Gras. Yes. I do that in November and December and then Mardi Gras happens. And then after February, I take my break and then in January, or I'm sorry, usually in June, I'm ready to settle down and start working again. And at, sometimes I work on that during my break, but yeah, I, I just, I'm just not that organized. I wish I was. Right. Don't I go we more all. <laughs> more organized and more hours in the day. I know, right? Yes. <laughs> now you mentioned you also have a website. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, um, I'll tell you why I did that. Um, yes. I'm really glad you asked. Um, I, I, um, do you remember in the beginning when I was talking about those reviews and how important it is to get those reviews? Yes, I do. What you need to do in order to encourage your customer to buy is to help reassure them, help them feel safe and secure in the idea that they can make this purchase and they're not going to get robbed because mm-hmm. you're selling on the internet. They can't see you. You can't look at their face and say, Hi, yeah, I'm a real person and so are you and I see you. And- yeah love you and I want you to have what you need, right? You can't yes. do that. You have to find a way to build that trust and reviews are a big part of it. But the other part of it is presence. Mm-hmm. And I built my website because I wanted to help my customers, potential customers see that I'm a real person. I'm really there. Mm-hmm. I'm not fly by night. I'm not disappearing tomorrow. I'm there. Mm-hmm. And I believe that when they go on the internet and they're like, oh, I really want to buy a mask from this person, but I just don't know Maybe, you know, maybe you run a TV studio and you need masks for the upcoming episodes of your show, uh, like 911, I build masks for that, or for the rookie, I sent masks for that. And if you're in marketing, you know, if you're a costume designer, you don't want to just send money randomly to random people. You need that production schedule. It's really important. I send masks to like the Houston Grand Opera. They need to know a hundred percent that I'm real. If I did not provide the service that I promised them that I'm going to do, they are so screwed. Mm. Like their production schedule is really going to get messed up. So what they want more than anything is they want to know that I will be there. I will solve their problem. I will get them what they need. Mm. I'm going to do a good job. It's going to be on time. And for me, part of that, that was about building a website. That was about being on Pinterest. That was getting my presence out there so that they could see that it's not just one little rinky dink thing on Etsy, right. but like a whole deal. I'm everywhere. If you look for me, you'll find me. I'm there. <sighs> and I'm and I want them to know that. So that was that was my strategy with that. Oh. So so um do you do you blog about personal things or it's just another way that people can connect with you outside of Etsy to verify yeah. that you're who you say you are. I wanted to blog. I, <laughs> I'm so busy. <laughs> I, like every, I really, I want to blog every week. And in fact, I blog like once a year. I just don't. <laughs> I, I, like, I wish I could figure out how to put the date on there. I listened to one of your podcasts. I think somebody said they figured out a way to just make it so it said Tuesday instead of like October 12th, 19. Oh, right. Yeah, so yeah, then, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, get, I just, I just don't have time. I wish I did. Even, even now, like I'm not in my studio. I'm in quarantine uh-huh. 5,000 away from home and I am still so busy and I still just don't have time to do it (laughs) yes oh man I know you would think now would be a good time but yes at at least you're well it's on it's on on your on your what you call it now what's the word I'm looking for I don't I don't remember (laughs) yeah but yes I I get that I get that I know I I wish I could write more I I have a list of of things I want to write, you know, like in, in addition to putting out the podcast episodes and the note for the episodes, because I get questions and, and a lot of people are asking the same things and wanting to know the same things. And I feel like if I could just sit down and write, although 
for me, I, I think it's kind of different because with a podcast, I think people are used to just hearing me and they're, they're not used to going to look for me to read. They're used yeah. to just hearing. And so it's different because I feel like it wouldn't be the same if I did more blogging or more writing because that's not where my audience, that's not where I've grown a connection with people. I haven't grown the connection on the website. This is where I'm growing the connection. And so this is probably where I should be answering all those questions. <laughs> I'm really glad I found you here though. I, I, I mean, I love your podcast and I love the way that you do this. And yeah, I, I mean, if you wrote a blog, I would go and look at it. I mean, I signed up for your newsletter and stuff. I would go and look at it. I think. Oh, you would. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm not sure. I think I would. <laughs> I know. I know. I don't worry. I get it. Yes. I, yeah, I feel like people look for you where they find you or where they found you. Yeah. If that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's exactly, that's exactly it. See, I, I tune in, I listen to the podcast. I yeah. love what you do. I look at your Facebook, like that's the other place I find you, but like a blog. Oh, that too. Yeah. It's like, you know, and, but uh, that's the thing, like with me, with my social media marketing, I have people that find me on Pinterest. They engage with me on Pinterest. Yes. Great. Those are my Pinterest yep. people. Yeah. Cool. I have my Instagram people and I really love them and they're so good to me. I have a really wonderful group on Facebook. Yes. They're different people. Yes. I have people that go to my website, but I like, I just checked in on there. I hadn't even been there in like, I don't know. I'm sorry to say at least a couple months. I just, <laughs> oh, I better make sure it's still working. You know, <laughs> I just don't go there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. It's, it's, I think we, what you said that they, they find you where they find you or whatever. Yes. Like, yeah, that. And, th and so, that's really, yeah. But you, Ajama, I think if you started to blog and you started to write and people found you there, those people would continue to look for you there because there's people that do that. They go to blogs, they go to websites and they look. I'm, I get people on my website. I just don't go there myself. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think people that do that and yeah. you can reach them. And so that's another way to find your people, right? Mm -hmm. Like your people are somewhere out there as a, as a creator, as a craftsperson or wh whatever it is that you sell on Etsy, vintage or whatever clothing, your people are out there somewhere. You're going to find them. I don't know where they are. You, you are going to find them. Yeah. And yeah, like what you said, if they, if you blog and maybe you're a vintage seller and you have like a blog where you, you take pictures and you go to the store where you buy your secondhand stuff and you, mm. oh, I found this great thing and you show it on like your Instagram and you take pictures and you put it on your blog and stuff. People that love your blog, they're going to go there to find you there yeah. and that you connect with them. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just exactly where they find you. Right. Yeah, that's true. So true. Okay. So, um, I had a question. Do you ever find that you get in a creative rut and the ideas just aren't coming? And if you do, how do you get out? Yeah. Um, I work, I, I work and work and work. I go into my studio or I make a new studio. If I have to, I work. And I, I really, I firmly believe that you need to be at work when luck walks in the door. Mm. You need to be writing when inspiration strikes. You need to be doing that photo shoot when the magic happens. If you're not doing it, you won't be ready. Mm. I like that. That's so deep. Did you say you need to be at work when luck strikes? Yeah, you need to be at work when luck walks in the door. When luck, luck walks, walks in the door. Yeah. Every now and then, but if you're not at work, they're just going to walk back out the door. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's, there's so much truth in that. Now, when you do get a new idea, typically, how long does it take from getting the concept to executing it and then having it ready to be sold. Yeah. Um, <sighs> oh man. Um, Long time. <laughs> I've got so many ideas. 
never gonna get them all done I, I do you I'm, track them do you keep is do you have a way of tracking all the ideas that you have oh man I'm I I do send myself emails and I write notes and it says Charlotte do this mm. do that and and I have like notes and sticky things stuck all over the walls mm. and I I do I go full on you know 12 18 hours a day and especially during Halloween and I I'm I I have realized that I am not going to get to do all the things that I want to do. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was good to, to get there. It was, it was a little bit of a struggle because I used to believe that I could do everything and I, you know, I was going to do it all. And now when I go to the craft store, I do not overbuy. I don't have a problem anymore. I go in there, I get what I need. I know what I have time for. I'm really realistic about what I'm going to be able to do. And, mm. and I, and out I go. Right. And, mm. So yeah, I, I <laughs> how long does it take? Oh, man. Yeah. Sorry, I can't answer it. Yeah. Oh no, and 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 that's a, that's an answer right there. It's you know you, you don't know and and I think that's valid. So yeah, we'll go with that. Are there? any or I, I wouldn't say are there any because there probably is m- more than one but what would you say is something that you're doing for yourself right now well running your business that is really working well for you yeah um yeah, I'm going to go back to Instagram. I mm-hmm. I know it's just so weird. I, I really didn't think I would like it, but <laughs> it's the social media marketing. I know mm-hmm. that there's Etsy sellers out there who get almost all of their traffic from their own efforts. Yeah. I'm not there yet. I I I mean it's a great it's a great goal and I would like to drive more traffic to my website. Um but so far just trying to pin from my Etsy shop and trying to pin from, you know, my Amazon store also just it, that seems to be working Pinterest and Instagram. And, and I was really lucky, um, on Facebook, there's a really, um, really great person there who helps me. She, she reposts, she she really loves my art. I know it's so weird. I'm always surprised people like my work, but she really (laughs) loves my art and she reposts it. And so, I would say that if you can build some relationships with people who who um, do spend a lot of time on social media, they if if they'll if they will like repost or repin or regram or whatever they like, retweet, I don't know, mm-hmm. they'll mm-hmm. go with it because there's like groups like Facebook groups that are devoted to different topics, right? Um, maybe there's one for I don't know like hair bows or jewelry or something. That people, those people are that's already your market. You know, you mm-hmm. already need to be reaching those people that are interested in that. Mm-hmm. And if there's people there that are willing to like share your stuff because they really like it, <laughs> seriously, <Take> it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um. What advice would you give to, and actually, no, I had another question before that, but I'll, I'll finish with this question. What advice would you give to a seller right now who is, who is struggling? And, and I'll ask it now, knowing that this, whoever you're going to give this answer to might be in a different situation now, but right now, you know, we're in a situation where we're on quarantine and we're, you know, not as mobile as we used to be. What advice would you give to a seller now who is struggling with the current situation? Because even if it's not COVID by the time this airs, you know, there's, we get stuck in different ways. So essentially I'm asking for that seller who is stuck, how 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 would you advise them to get unstuck? You mean like to improve their sales or mm-hmm. yes? Like that? Yeah, I think that um, make sure that you are making or selling something that people want. Mm-hmm. Find out who those people are and find out where they are. So if they are the people that that read blogs and websites work on your blog and your website. If they're the people that are on Instagram, work on your Instagram. 
find out if you can make something that they want, find out where they are and connect with them. And you have to go where they are. So, you, you, you know, like, I, I guess uh, if you make like, um, I don't know, maybe you make aprons, like probably those people read cooking blogs, right? Or they look at, I don't know, like recipes.com. Go there, find a way to put yourself there, right? Connect with somebody that runs a cooking blog or, or whatever, like if you make aprons, right? If you make, um, I don't know, um, I have a hair ties. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's somebody, there's, there's, there's a time and a place where people want like hair bows, right? And find out if it's for like, um, I don't know, like religious baptisms or something like that, then, then find out where the people that are planning their weddings or their baptisms or whatever, go online and go there and put yourself there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So find them, make sure that you are making what they want and then find out where they, who they are yeah. and then find out where they are and then go there. Yeah. And insert yourself into the conversation, not in a rude way, but get involved in, in their lives, I guess, in some way. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would say so. Like, I mean, if you, yeah, that's the thing we, we should, we need to be involved and engaged with each other. Mm -hmm. We need to have these communities. If, if what you're making is something that's like important for your community, I, I'm sure that there's like community groups where you can connect with people. And I know it's hard right now, but we've got the internet. As long as the internet stays up, <laughs> we can do a lot. Oh yeah. Oh man. If we lose the internet, it's going to be rough times. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Very rough times. <laughs> now, um, talking about the Etsy platform, are there any features that you would like to see on the platform that today in the way it exists don't currently exist? Oh man, I, I would, I would really like them to make their accounting a little bit more transparent. Um, it seems like about quarterly, there's some kind of a weird glitch or mistake. And I think it, I think it hurts the sellers. I think it hurts the buyers. I think it hurts the platform. I, I think it hurts the reputation of the entire operation. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they didn't rob me, but they did try to get money from, um, one of my best friends bank account. That was like about a year, a little more than a year ago. What? And so yeah. Um, do you remember that when they tried to take money out of people's bank bank accounts? Do you remember that? No. I'll send you a link. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and I would really like to see at CB a little bit, not a little bit, a lot more straightforward with their accounting and how all that stuff works. Because mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people find it absolutely just bamboozling. Confusing. It is confusing, yeah. Yeah, I, I think they could do a lot better with that. Um, okay. I think that the the idea of transparency and how they run stuff is really important for trust. Mm. I mean, about that, we talked about how how do you increase the yeah. trust of your customer, and I think Etsy needs to really work on that. Okay. And now you're also on eBay and Amazon. Are you on those platforms as Crooked Crow Masks? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So, so folks can go and look, look you up there. Is everything the same on all three platforms and your website? No. Um, and in fact, I just started trying to set up a, a Shopify too. I've never had time to do it. I was like, I, I just, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> I got, I got like halfway through reading the, like how to add a listing in the night. <laughs> <laughs> that was two days ago. The tab is still open. Yeah. I'm yeah. Run out I do that too. <laughs> I got the 90 day free trial and I'm going to run out. I'm not even going to get it. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. I sell fewer items on eBay. Um, and I sell, I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm really not happy with Amazon. I don't like a lot of their policies and I'm thinking about just letting it go. You are know, you, are but you getting sales on there? I do. I make about as much, uh, well in years I have made about as much on Amazon as I do on Etsy. Oh, um, so why would you walk away? I make, I make about um, a third of that amount on eBay. And I did really well on Instagram this year. So I, I was surprised. Um, I use PayPal. So 
I connect with those people on Instagram and then um, I just direct them to send me the money on PayPal. Yes. And I do sometimes ask them if I, if there's even the slightest hint of like, Oh, this person might not be above board. I ask them to go through my Etsy shop because Etsy mm-hmm. offers a protection for both of us. Yes. And yes. That's really important. And I, I'm, I'm as aware that I can be taken advantage of. I think other people are concerned about that too. It can go both ways. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. I hate to do this, but I, I just got this. I told you I get questions and I wrote an article a few months ago called how to sell on Instagram without a website where I walk through how I sell through Instagram and do what you're doing. I send a PayPal invoice for payments and yesterday somebody left a comment on that article saying well you know how do i how do you know if someone is going to be problematic like they're not going to be if they're you know dodgy or fraudulent fraudulent yeah and exactly what you're talking about and so far i've had good experiences but i know it does and it can happen and yes i do like you say you know if if somebody doesn't feel like they're going to be above board you know i it's tied to my Etsy shop. So I, I use, I use it for both the street cred. I would, or I guess to yeah. inspire, to instill trust where I say, check out my Etsy store. You know, if you don't want to buy it here, it's, yeah. it's on sale on Etsy. You can, you can buy it through Etsy as well. So you're protected. I'm protected. And then for some people who aren't on Etsy, but they can see, okay, she does sell on Etsy. Other people have had a good experience with her. Okay, fine. Just send me the PayPal invoice. Then we do it that way. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I think that's that's great. I should go back and listen to that one. I think I, I probably have it bookmarked somewhere. Oh, yeah, I need to go through that walkthrough and find out how to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's really easy. I mean, yeah. And so, so yeah, good deal. Thanks for sharing that. And I didn't ask you this beforehand, so if you don't have one, that's okay. But do you have an Etsy shop shout out? It can be another seller that has helped you or it's just a store that you like perusing or shopping at that you don't mind mentioning. Yeah, I I do. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna have to ask you to pause because I'm going to have to load it up, okay? <laughs> okay, well, while you're loading it up... Um, can you tell us how folks can connect with you? What's the best way for people to reach you um, if they want to stay in touch after after this? Yeah, I um, if they send me a message on Etsy, I have all my notifications and everything set up so that if okay. I get an email or, or a notif- you know, a message somewhere, I, I get it right away. Unless I'm okay. asleep, I'll usually respond pretty quickly. Okay. Um, so through the Etsy message system, they can find me on Instagram, Facebook. Um, they can email me. They can send me a message from my website. Okay. And, and your handle on Instagram is Crooked Crow Masks? Yep. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of um characters. It is. <laughs> but at least at least it took them. <laughs> I'm trying to find that. Okay. Oh, my friend's shop. It's going to have to I mean have to do it later. I'm sorry. Okay. So you can you can send it to me after and then I will put a link to it in the show notes for this episode. Oh, um, I just it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's the furry chicken. The furry um, chicken? F U R R Y? Yeah, it's the free chicken, and um, she's my friend. She makes the most amazing costumes, and accessories, and art that that I I'm always absolutely astounded by her work. She does uh, costumes and stuff for cosplay, oh. cosplayers. And what I a lot of times I get something from like a movie they want, or um, you know, a director, producer, or something, and they want something, and I can't do it. And if it's mm the kind of thing that I know that she can do. I always send them to her and they're always really happy nice. with her work. So um, yeah. Oh, and that's another good reason to connect with other people who are in your industry um, is that you can, you can share customers too. Um, if, if you're busy with work or overwhelmed and vice versa, if you're slow and someone else is getting orders 
and they refer you um, just another and I think that's just another reason why it's better to not have that what's that mentality people refer to it where you think there isn't enough to go around scarcity yeah like scarcity. it's a zero sum game or that you're competing look you're not yeah. competing if if yeah. you are a real or if you're a craftsman if you're a creator if you're a person that is artistic creative in some way and you are following your vision you don't need to worry about anybody copying you there's nobody that can copy you mm. nobody can do you are the only you that will ever exist yeah and what's your friend's name that runs the furry chicken? She's her name's Marie. Marie. Okay. So I will have a link to Marie's shop, the furry chicken, for anyone to go and check it out and let her know Charlotte sent you. <laughs> I'll tell her to put something in her shop in case it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's not. I have it. I just I just okay. pulled it up and I see this that she has some things on sale. So yeah, very she, cool. It's the most amazing stuff. And she's on um, Instagram too. I'll get you the Instagram link. Yeah. Okay. okay. Charlotte, thank you so much um, for taking time out to have this conversation with me, even in the midst of all what's going on. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad you're okay and you're sheltering in place, even though you're far from home. I really do hope that you get to get back home soon, sooner than rather than later. Thank you. Thank you for all you do, too. I, I understand that you're one of our um, frontline heroes, and I really, really appreciate you going out there every day and being brave like that. I can't thank you enough. We need people like you. Thank you, Charlotte. And I do thank you also for listening to the podcast, and I will be back with another episode next week. If you'd like to connect with me, you can do so on Instagram. I am at convo me podcast um, you can also feel free to send me an email at interview at convo me.com and if you would like to be my guest on the podcast please do feel free to connect with me um, on either platform and let me know you can also go to convo me.com and click on the be my guest tab and i will be happy to host you, to host you.